In our parasha, parashat b'shalach, we found that Am Israel, right after Kriyat Yamsuf, gets to a place called Mara. Mara means bitter. Why was the place called bitter? Because at the time they came there, the water were bitter. They wouldn't be able to drink that water. So therefore, they started crying and pleading with HaKadosh Baruch Hu that he should give them water to drink. Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu to take a piece of wood, throw it into the water, and the water would sweeten. That was a miracle. That's what happened. But I was wondering, why was the place still called bitter, Mara? It says in the Pasuk, Marata, they came to Mara, they couldn't drink the water because the water was bitter. Therefore, the name of the place was called Mara, bitter. After the miracle, it says over there, Hashem said, The water became sweet. After the miracle, HaKadosh Baruch Hu also gave Am Yisrael different laws of Torah in order for them to be able to learn and elevate themselves with the learning. So therefore, as she says, In the place of Mara, I gave them those parashiyot of Torah, which are Shabbat, Parad, Uma, Dinim. Also, the Gemara says that mitzvah of kibbut aven, honoring your parents, were given to them in Mara. But why was the name of the place stayed Mara? The place should have changed to sweet instead of bitter, to a place of Torah, because they were given Torah over there, to a place of a miracle, call it Nisa, Metuka, Torah, something positive. Why do you call it something negative? Same question in last week, Parashat, Parashat Bo. The Torah says that after Am Yisrael uh, saw the makot that Mitzrayim received, right before the makat bechorot, the last makah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that they should put the blood, smear the blood of the Korban Pesach around the doorposts on the mezuzot, which are the two sides of the door, and the mashkof is on top of the door. The Torah says the word mezuzot, that's the top. This is what Rashi explains, that mezuzot, those are the ones standing from the sides. What's mashkof? Mashkof, it's the top part of the door that hits, that gets heated, hit every time the door smashes on it, every time the door locks on it, closes on it, it gets hit. And therefore, that bump that it gets gives him the name Mashkov. That's how Rashi says, Lashon Shkifa Chavata, every time he gets hit by the door, that's the reason it's called Mashkov, on the name of the fact that he's getting beaten up every time. I was wondering, why do you call such a negative name? It's not nice to call the Mashkov such a negative name that he constantly gets abused and gets hit and he gets uh, smashed. And, and also, why don't you call the same name to the other doorpost on the other side of the door that the door closes up on it and bumps on it every time? Why that was called Mezuzah and didn't get the name also Mashkov, get the same name as the top? And I was thinking the answer is a very, very interesting idea that we can learn a lot from. And the, that is that whenever you're on top, you don't care what people say about you. Since the mashkof is on top and the mezuzot are on the bottom, since the mashkof is on top, you can call him whatever you want. It does not bother him whatsoever. He doesn't care because he's on top. And whenever a person is on top, he's higher than the others. You can call him names. You can uh, say bad things about him. He doesn't care because he knows he's on top. That's why you call the mezuzah, whatever, the mashkof, whatever you want to call. But the mezuzah itself, you can't call in that name because that's on the bottom. That's going to be very painful to the mezuzah to be called a painful name. And, and, and therefore, the mezuzah doesn't get the name mashkof. The same thing by our parasha, parashat b'shalach, as we just shown, that the place is called Mara. Mara, the place itself doesn't care because it's so much elevated. The place of Mara 
had in it a miracle that the water changed into sweet. The place of Mara have now beautiful sweet water. That gives it also a very, very important by, uh, area by itself that people can enjoy the place and because of the water. Thirdly, the place itself had been given in it the Torah, the, the Torah laws of Mikzat Parashiot, of Shabbat, Paraduma, Dinim, Kibud Avem, as we saw. So therefore, it's very, very high and elevated place because of that. And it doesn't care what you would call it. Big Musal for us, if we elevate ourselves spiritually in the important things, of course, a person, we're not talking about feeling gafa, feeling more important than others. That's not what we're talking about. Because on the contrary, when you feel more important than others, when you raise your gava, when you pump yourself, then every little thing that somebody tells you really hurts you because you are so much elevated. Like Haman. Haman felt so good about himself, so important about himself. If Mordechai wouldn't bow down to him, he couldn't tolerate it. So we're talking about the real elevation, spiritual elevation, that a person should feel that is more elevated and really get himself more elevated, not only feel that way, really think about the important things in life, about Torah, about mitzvot, about Hashem. When a person has that, his priorities, all the other things become very small. The parable to that is that when you are over here in, in the land, everything looks big. A car looks big, people look big, trucks look big and tall, uh, trees look very tall and very wide. But once you take off in an airplane, slowly, slowly you get higher and higher, those things become smaller and smaller. That's until it can completely disappears, you don't see it anymore. That's the parable to what we're saying. But when a person elevates himself, the more he elevates himself, the more those things become smaller and smaller and they disappear, that you don't care about those things whatsoever. And therefore, the Musar is that the person should elevate himself. But again, it's not that just a talk or a person that should feel that way about himself, but rather should really uh, elevate himself to be more spiritual, more closer to Hashem. And then everything else would disappear. You wouldn't care anymore what people say about you or what people feel about you. You would care about higher things. And that really is the mission in life. Shabbat Shalom.